In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Google Analytics custom report, in this case, just to look at the email performance of the email campaigns bringing visitors to this site. So we've clicked on the custom reports tab up here, and I'm now on the overview page, as you can see here, and I click here to create a new custom report. Right, the first thing we're called upon to do is to call the report something. In my case, I'm going to call it email for Tim. The reason I'm giving a, putting a name on it is as a reminder that these custom reports are specific to each individual login. So putting my name on it is a reminder to me that I'm the only person who's actually going to go and see this. The first thing I want to do is to set the context for this report. The point about this one is that it's going to be about email only, so we add a context filter. Uh, Google Analytics comes from Google, who are a search company, so you can either use this amazing scrolling list or get used to the fact that the way their system seems to work best is by you searching. Uh, so in our case, we're going to go for the medium. It contains email, um, because we've established that that's the best way of finding all the email traffic on this site. They're, they're consistently tagged with mediums containing email. We're offered two options here, exact or regular expression. Exact would mean that we have to get this spot on. If we change this to regular expression, regex, and put in email, we're saying that anything where the medium contains email, it could be emails with an S, or it could be any other string that contains email, will be matched. So that's, that's what we want to do. Now, the next bit gets kind of complicated. This is where we get into the nitty-gritty of all this which are the report tabs and what data is going to show in the report. So it's quite a good idea to plan this out in advance or to know what you're doing. Um, in my case, I've got a nice little mind map in which I've organised everything. So we've got there the fact that the context filter is going to be email. At the next level down, which is the tabs, we're interested in the products being sold by these emails. So, And we're using, we've established in advance that it's the campaign tag which is used to separate, differentiate between the different emails in this particular case. Uh, it might be different on your site, but in this case it's campaign. Um, so here we're going to have a tab which is all about the products which are sold from that campaign. I also think it would be interesting to have a tab in which we can see what are the pages involved, specifically where do these email campaigns send people, where are they landing on the site, and what's the different bounce rates and so on. Uh, uh, related to the visits that start in different places. We're obviously interested in the money, um, so we're talking about the number of orders, we're going to have a tab showing the number of orders, the revenue and the conversion rates. And because in this top level I've, I'm opting to uh, differentiate things up by campaign, so we're going to look at each campaign and then you, or, or email as they are in effect in this case, and then drill down into the report to see which products were sold, I think it might be useful to have another variation on a similar report in, a, in this tab here, where we're going to have the products showing at the top level, and then you'll drill down into them to see which campaign, or email in this case, sold them. So I've planned it all out, uh, those two are showing similar bits of information, but in a, it's just presented in a different way, and these two areas are showing uh, more detail relating to those particular emails. So the first one we're going to do is this one, products by campaign. So I'll get this one, let's just move this out of the way again, if I can, hang on a second. So we're going to call that one, products by campaign. Right, reports are available in a couple of formats. You can have the Explorer, which is the standard Google Analytics type of report, which is what we're interested in here. But for reference, you can also have a type of report called Flat Table, which is really, really good for exporting. So moving on down, I've now got my products campaign. I can now consider the different metric groups. These are the numbers that are going to show up in the charts uh, and the, at the top and in the headline figures and in the rows of each table. So in this case, uh, we're interested in uh, products. Um, the naming conventions here are a bit flex too flexible, it seems to me, in some senses. It's a bit hard to work out the differentiation between what you're going to call that there and what you're going to call that 
fair, that one. Um, in this case, I'm just going to stick with products because I'm only actually going to have one metric group here. The metrics are the numbers. This, the first one that you put in is the one that will be showing in the graph by default and sorted by on the table by default. So I think we're interested in money. So let's go for product revenue. Remember, we've got two versions. Revenue is the overall order total, and product revenue is the one that we want, which is per product. So product revenue there, and we'll also have the quantity oops, of those items sold there. So that's the first set of numbers that we're going to look at and we were going to have it so that you started with the default view was by campaign again I'm using search just to jump to the dimensions that I really want to show up in here and the next row down if you drill click on the campaign and drill down that's where we're going to see the products there we go product that is our first report tab done the second one I mentioned that we are going to do is about pages Oops, where am I typing? Pages. Again, I'm going to have that as an explorer. I'm just going to call this, again, repeat it here, metric group pages. We're only going to have the one metric group on this at this level. Here, I was interested in what the people did. Now, the default view, we need to have the visits because we want the data to be sorted by default, showing which are the most important ones, the ones that, whatever it was, is that attracted most visits. So we're going to have that there. Uh, the other type of numbers we're interested in is the pages per visit. Uh, pages per visit, let's have that. And since we're interested in what people did who were bringing to the, tra bringing to the site via a campaign, let's have the bounce rate. That's always an interesting one to have here. Okay, and this. What we want to see in the table is which landing page were we sending to them to. We want to be able to compare the performance of these different landing pages. So the dimension that we're going to segment on is landing page. So that's another fairly straightforward tab done. Now let's get into a more complicated one. This is that one where I was going to talk about the orders, the revenue, and some a conversion rate. Um, we may end up in this case. I think we're going to have um, both some the major conversion rate, the e-commerce conversion rate, and some micro conversions, such as uh, things to do with add to basket. Again, it's going to be an explorer. But in this case, we are going to have a couple of metric groups. So let's separate those out. This one is going to be about orders. And revenue. So we're going to have hard numbers in this. The orders in GA are actually called transactions. That's the name of that dimension. So that's the default view is how many orders. It might be better to have had revenue there rather than transactions. Uh, let's do that. Let's just change that one. Uh, and We're interested in products the whole time, so let's go with product revenue. Now, this is orders. Let's go at the order level. Excuse me. We'll have the overall order revenue there. Uh, the number of orders, which as I was mentioning just now are called transactions in the terminology here. And I think we should go for per visit value. That would be good. Let me just check my crypt sheet. Yes, that's what I was going to go for. Uh, visit value. And in this case, because we're interested in pages, no, sorry, beg your pardon, we're back to the campaigns, aren't we? I'm getting this slightly confused. So campaign. And we'll keep this simple, we're not going to drill down on this one. I'm not going to, you could add another drill down, I'm not sure quite what it would be. But we were also going to have one uh, metric group relating to conversions. Now, as you will note, the campaign, this area and this area, all up here, everything remains the same. We're just making a variation to go in the middle section of the report. Um, I'm just going to check which conversion rates that I wanted, because there's a slight quirk to this one, which I will show you in a minute. Now, the, again, we don't want high converting to, to show the default view with at the top of the list, high converting 
uh, visits, which actually were, you know, there's only a handful of people came from that particular email or whatever it was. So what we're going to do is start, I'm afraid, with, um, let me just check the visits again. We're going to start with the default sort based on visits. So the first column is the basic visit number so that we get this sorted in a way that makes sense. Now I'm trying to think which conversion rates to go for. We probably want the e-commerce conversion rate first. Uh, and the snag is that if you look here, we don't have e-commerce conversion rate available yet as one of the metrics that we can put in there. So what I'm going to, I happen to know that goal 11 in this in my normal working profile that I'm going to use this with is the checkout. So the goal conversion rate for that goal is very, very close to being the same as the e-commerce um, conversion rate. It is effectively the same thing. So we'll have that. What I'm also interested in is the behavior of people who come to this site and go to the basket page, but the offers aren't compelling enough for them to go further on, or there is some glitch with the offer that they're using and it doesn't look right on the basket page. So I've set up a special funnel, goal, uh, goal 12, uh, with the, a, a funnel related to it, which is basically measuring whether people came to the basket page, that's a required step in this funnel, and whether they then continued further on to the next step in the checkout. So the abandonment rate for that particular goal is an interesting indicator of people either having problems on the basket page or not liking what they saw on the basket page in some particular way. So I'll put that on my report. And I'm going to have another abandonment rate. But this is the goal 11 that I mentioned just now, which is the overall checkout in this case. And I'm going to add that in, goal 11 abandonment rate. That's the overall checkout abandonment rate, which will actually also include the people who abandoned at that stage. But this is another uh, indication. It's not just, in my experience, that's not just an indication of whether the checkout is having problems, technical or confusion or something of that type. It is also an indication of how enthusiastic, how eager people were to buy, how strong an offer, uh, how compelling was your offer that made them want to buy, even though they were perhaps having a little bit of a struggle in the checkout. In my experience, that particular rate is also affected by seasonal issue, uh, seasonal factors, or by other promotional factors. So I'm going to have that in there as well. So that is my conversion rate um, tab, uh, sorry, metric group added to my orders, revenue and conversion rate tab. And then I was going to add one final tab, which was the one, another product one, but listing the products in a different way. So this one is going to be called product list. It's an explorer one. Uh, the metric group No, I can't, let me just, I'm just referring to my uh, sort. The last time we did product revenue first as the default view and then quantity. So this way, this time round, just for the sake of being different, see which works better for us. I'll swap it round. We'll have product there and product revenue. So our default sort is going to be the quantity rather than the revenue. And that's, to my mind, sort of makes sense because... Here, we're not going to look at the campaigns at this level. We're going to look at the product in the default first view. And then you can drill down in this version to campaign. And that, I think I have covered all the different things that I want in my custom report for now. I'm going to check which uh, profile it's visible in. It's visible in, the, this is the one where I happen to start editing it from, I think. and or I can choose to add it to other profiles in there. That would produce a full list of all my the profiles I have access to. So I'm actually not going to do that because it's rather confusing. But you can choose and should choose which profiles you want this report to be visible in. And then you click Save. And that's it. It's done. 